to another episode of Maddie Loves Podcast. I'm your host, Matt DeSimone. Join with me as always, Dr. Tom Lucas. Welcome back to the Matt Cave. Ooh-ah. So, um, a few nights ago, Tom and I... Something terrible happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tom and I uh, went to the um, theatrical premiere of DC Animated's new adaptation of Alan Moore's Batman The Killing Joke. Going into it, I had seen blurbs that more or less said WTF uh, about uh, The Killing Joke and I you know There I was a a SDCC uh, kerfuffle. Yes, there was a Comic-Con kerfuffle uh, uh, over the, you know at the panel. It was like we show the film and now that fell apart. So let's just have a panel and this is going to fall apart as well. Uh, it was kind of historical actually. I don't think anything has gotten really that uh, you know, I don't know what word, juvenile. Uh, yeah, at a at a panel discussion. It, it, it got it got ugly. Close to name calling. But anyway, mm-hmm. so I'm thinking to myself, well, how can this be bad when all they've been telling us for a year is how this is going to be the greatest adaptation of any story? They were going to go by the book. You know, Bruce Tim is the producer. Can't go wrong because he was the creator or co-creator of uh, Batman the Animated Series. You know, it's like this is going to be great. All the previews we saw with, you know, we see the Brian Ball and you know Joker, you know, with his hands to his. Uh, head laughing we're like wow is the animation gonna be like that no 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 at all no it's not like that at all so that's the first thing that was a disappointment uh secondly uh this is not the closest adaptation it could be maybe the furthest uh from any adaptation they've ever done aside from maybe two or three scenes that were relatively accurate joker's origin in the in the comic is dead on. It's pretty much right. the same thing. Yeah. Um, but there there are definitely little things about that that just uh, kind of kind of uh, irked me. So from the top. Well, it should be. Uh, you know those uh, colognes that are supposed to. They're the the cheap, smells like smells like yeah right. smells like the killing Colo. joke. Right. Yeah. <laughs> smells like the killing joke. That's right. That's definitely. This can be found. Uh, you know, this DVD should be found on the racks of, like, Sitco's for, like, yeah. $3.99 F- standard Find release. it in the duty-free shop at the airport. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, so uh, last night, when in, in preparation for the podcast, I, uh, I went on Rotten Tomatoes, which is the best site to go to when you want to find out if the movie's good or not. Yes. And uh, I, w- I went on there, and it is 50% rotten. And, I mean... You know, that was being. That's not. That's pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah, I was being. I was being kind of sarcastic with the Rotten Tomatoes. You don't go there if you want to find out whether you need to go see your movie or not. Um, but uh, you know, and there there are times when when you know I am in total uh, agreement with um, with Rotten Tomatoes, and this is definitely one of those. And folks, it's really hard to get over like forty percent rotten. You know, on mm. most films, you know? right? Usually, a rotten film is about like thirty six to. 39 to 40. Well, you know, when I talked about it online, someone said I liked it, and my response was some people like anchovies on pizza. That's right. Oh, you yeah, know? to each his own. I mean, yeah. I got a buddy of mine back in Roanoke who uh, who is uh, one of the... Uh, he'll give anything a chance, you know. He's, a, yeah. he's definitely glass half full on any of the comic book films and everything, and you know, he... He's usually a, he'll usually give something like an eight out of ten just on effort alone, right. you know. Um, but you know, with this, I mean, it's just it's this is just it was awful, man. It really was. And I'm sitting there for the first thirty minutes, you know, through the Barbara Gordon prologue, right. And I'm thinking to myself, man, like I don't want to look over at Tom and be like, this is complete horseshit. 
you know, because, you know, you took the time out to get us tickets for the event, you know, I was stoked, yeah, you know, yeah, you it's excited. Alan Moore, I was Brian Boland, one of the greatest Joker stories ever sure. told, blah, blah, blah. Sure, but, but the first time I kind of looked over at you and you kind of gave me the same look, I yeah. was like, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, so, so, I guess right off the bat, my main issue with the story is the fact that we are going to care about Barbara Gordon as soon as she walks over to the apartment door to open it because we've read the damn comic book and we know who's on the other right. side of the door. Who we know is what's watching this movie? Right, that's the thing. And that's why I say this is another one of those insulting moments adaptations of comic books often provide for me. Yeah. It's like, you're insulting me. Right. Like, we know what's going to happen. Right. You know, you don't have to like uh, give us any sort of filler to give us to, to make us feel compassion for Barbara, who we know is paralyzed. Yeah, my Barbara Gordon, since I was a little boy, outside of Yvonne Craig, was paralyzed. Yeah, it was Oracle when I first started reading comic books. You know, and everything. She yeah. used to be Batgirl. You know, that was. That was the deal. And so if you're thinking in your head, okay, let's get some some new viewers, you know, these kids that are going to be watching this for the first time, for one, kids shouldn't be watching this shit. I thought it was R-rated, no? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I think it is. But yeah. still, kids are kids, you know. Yeah, oh, they're going to they're, they're going to watch it regardless. It, exactly. So 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 in the very beginning, Totally, like, I mean, we don't care about spoilers here on the podcast, and I don't care if you, like, are getting ruined listening to this or not, because there's no point in really taking the time out. We're saving you money. We are. We definitely are. Um, you know, Barbara Gordon has sex with Bruce Wayne uh, at the close of the prologue. Which There's makes that. Up, which makes up about the first 16 minutes of the, uh, the, 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 the movie. It's not... The whole 60 minutes is not a second. So, movie. like, the first thing I point out in conversations with people, right, besides the fact of that whole sex scene, which is just, there's no plan where Bruce Wayne would do that. No. Right? If, if he's not getting with Catwoman straight up, you know, come on. Yeah. His, his be best friend, working partner's daughter. Talia. Ta right. Or Talia. That, he doesn't get close to people, no. right? So anyway, so this happens, all right? So it's and happened. he just lets it happen, right, too, yeah, by the way. Yeah, it happens, right? And then a few days go by, they, they don't talk, right? Which is like, uh, okay. Um, Batman is not an avoider. Yeah. But anyway, I asked people, I said, okay, so I explained this happens. I said, so Batgirl calls, him, and he's in the Batmobile on the job. Yeah. How does Batman answer the phone? Okay, if we're if we're gonna try to stay true to the character, right? Hello, Barbara, or yes, or what do you want, right. or you know, something. He answers the phone. Hey, right. Hey. Hey. Yeah. yeah. What is that? I mean. It's just an unmitigated disaster. Yeah, I want to know who the foutoi thought that, <laughs> that this whole prologue was a good idea. And how people like Jim Lee, Brian Azzarello, yeah. there's no, who wrote this movie, there's no way as said, let's have Barbara have sex with Bruce. Right. There's no way. Right. There's no way. And I think that that kind of... Um, you know, his reaction to everything at the panel at Comic-Con kind of tells me that Az didn't get to write, you didn't get his version of... of he wrote edit. something yeah. and then they changed a bunch of stuff yeah. and left him on it. Yeah. You, and now you start, I'm, you know, I guess... This is an unmitigated disaster. Yes. This movie is a disaster. Yes, it is a Titanic Ugh, you know, it's bad. But, but they they're the ones who put the iceberg in place. Right. Like, um, yeah. uh, how? I don't know if it's groupthink. Like they all disagreed with each other and nobody got constructive with it. I don't know if it was studio meddling. This has taken two years to make. Yeah. This is that's you know, what that's what blows my mind look, about this. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna save my what they should have done for after we just completely critique it, but don't let me forget okay. to throw that. In um, there. The Joker origin story, like I said, was probably the the closest to Alan Moore's uh, you know 
original uh, origin from Killing Joke, mm-hmm. uh, but still, as even even as a cartoon, it's unrealistic. Yeah, you know, I just felt it was just so unrealistic, like just something like not believable about any of this shit that's happened. At one point, okay, so Joker finds out that uh, his wife was killed in a, in a in a gas fire. Basically, the oven exploded and yeah. she died. Uh, with child. Yes. Um, he gets off the phone and then walks back in after finding out about that and sits down because he's about to do his first Red Hood thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, but I'm not doing the Red Hood thing yeah. that night. Yeah. Give me a couple days <laughs> or find someone else because this really is something that I can't handle right now. Based on how they presented the character, he would have just run down the street. Right. And not even come back inside. Right, exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so, and to top it all off, the guys tell him, when you come back, make sure that you're wearing a sport coat and a bow tie. Which he's wearing! Which is what he has on! Yeah. Like, what the <laughs> hell? He's wearing it, you I idiot! Didn't, I didn't know if you caught that yeah, or not. That's, yeah, dude. Oh. I, 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 didn't, I didn't understand that at all. I'm like, what? He's got a bow tie and a coat on, you uh, idiot. Yeah. It's like, this is terrible! It's like the art department wasn't reading the script or the voice when they were doing the voice acting. They weren't looking at the animation. I don't. How does that even get in there? I I don't know. I don't know. That was that was unbelievable. Just little things like that. You know, it's just it's it's like you know referencing a dead character who's standing right beside the guy (laughs) waving. Yeah, like I'm not dead. I'm right here. (laughs) She does not get that in like post or something. Uh, So so that was bad. Uh, going as far as performances goes from the from the voice acting, I really feel like Kevin Conroy's performance changes from when Batman's doing his barber thing in the first like eighteen minutes to the rest of the film. Mm-hmm. Like he's very like no, like yeah. no, like yeah. he does that a lot. To- you're, he says you're off the case like three times. You're off the case. No, Barbara. No, and then. No. It's like the chief of police in a Dirty Harry movie. Yeah. You're a loose cannon. Yeah. You're no. going to you're gonna jeopardize everything. Give me your badge. I thought I told you not to be around here. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. help it. Man, all right. Yeah. No, Batman is not going to do that. No. Uh, no. So, so anyway, I kind of think Kevin He'd, like, Conway... go over to her apartment and, like, super glue the door, you know? Right. Or something. Right. I think Conroy mailed it in. I thought he read that stuff and was like, this is bullshit, man. Yeah, give me my money. Oh, uh, you know, or it could have. So before the the film, there was a little feature on why Mark Hamill is cool. Bro, yeah. you know, and he is. Uh, I'm a huge fan. September twenty um, fifth. What? We share a birthday. Oh, very nice. And uh, he's he now with that beard and his aging, he's starting to really look like my dad, which is really kind of weird and cool at the same time. But uh, the nose, what's happening with his nose when mm. you get old? Anyway. Uh, something to look forward to, I guess. Um, maybe it was, you know, because, like, Hamill was really excited to revisit the Joker. I mean, he is the gold standard in Joker he's characterizations, the Joker, you know. I mean, yeah. when I read the comic books, he, he, I hear he, he, his two, Joker voice. He's contributed two major things to our culture, Luke Skywalker and the Joker, mm-hmm. you know, along with Cockknocker and all the other characters that he's sure. portrayed over the years but anyway trickster you know maybe there was just this uh conroy was excited to be working with people again hamill was excited to be working with the crew the band is back together right. yeah, kind yeah. of thing and no one really objectively looked at the script because they were just more excited about playing the alumni game. Right. You know? Yeah. And looking at the actual playbook. Because, uh, wow. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, like, you know, even Mark Hamill could not carry this for me, man. I mean, he really, really couldn't. No. His best scene is the Joker's when he first goes into the amusement park and he's buying it from the guy. Yeah, and yeah. He, and he runs off that soliloquy, you know, and that's the best part. Because sure. that was... The only part for me that I was like, okay, and I remember this in Killing Joke, you know. Oh, and the musical number was just. Uh, oh my God! Did, we didn't did, even talk about did that. Did somebody's the other night. like nephew write that? What the hell was that? It was man? 
first of all, there's as a far musical as, number, by the way, folks. Yeah, and it was a really bad. Yeah. Like it, even if like you're like, I love musical it's numbers. Like it's like they tried to go Batman the anim animated series like that on the animated series. I could understand. Yeah, yeah. Like a quick little song. Well, the and dance. Well, the one where he Batman's forced to sing. Right. You know yeah, that exactly, one. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, the and, and and even most importantly. Um, the story of the Killing Joke is about the duality of Batman and Joker. And how how essentially Batman created Joker. Yeah. But they can't exist without each other. Right. And that they're basically the same guy with different results, you know? And that their their relationship, you know, they exist because and for one another. Exactly. And yin and not, yang. Yeah, we, yeah the yin and yang. Uh, to be more succinct. No, that's just not there. Mm -mm. It's just not there. And the, the ending, which we'll leave for you to be disappointed in, um, totally misses that. Yeah, it totally really does. misses what Moore was doing. Why is it that we understand Moore's work and the point of it so well, but the insiders are missing it? How could they miss the, 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 the key element? Well, see, and, oh, the work. and there's a whole other thing, too, with, like, you know, stroking egos and burning egos or hurting egos, you know? Yeah. I mean, Alan Moore is historically just a curmudgeon, you know? Yeah. Isn't very respectful of, of kind of how he got to where he was and the work that he produced, you know? He's, he's, he acts like he's just not proud of it at all. And, yeah. And you know, I mean, but he wouldn't be Alan Moore if he hadn't done those things, right? And and so you make a piece of shit like this. What do you think he's going to say? You know, he ain't gonna even have to watch five minutes of this. You yeah, know? he knew it from the beginning. He wouldn't have to, but now it's like, I really don't want to watch it. Here's just another one of my stories that has been completely tarnished. Yeah, you know, um, and so. Anybody that comes away with this and say that this is one of the best Batman features they've ever seen, shut up. You're full of shit. Don't ever talk to me. Yeah, right. Go, uh, I'd rather you go watch Max, Mask of the Phantasm or... Uh, um, yeah, man. Um, Batman Beyond. Batman Revenge Beyond. Revenge of the Joker. Revenge of the Joker. Now, the, the last thing I'd say, so all the problems, well, a lot, many of the problems occur in this film because they said... We needed more story, and The Killing Joke is actually a fairly short story. Okay? So. Which is perfect. Right. I mean. Well, what they should have done is, like, a Joker anthology. Like, three half-hour The Joker greatest sto Joker yeah. stories ever told. Yes. You know? And not try to pad The Killing Joke, but instead just tap into th the th three, three huge Joker stories. Killing Joke, All maybe right. The Joker, and... Uh, so, real quick then, three Joker stories, the most memorable Joker stories for you. Killing Joke, obviously, boom, that's one. Death in the Family. Death in the Family, the death of Jason Todd, two. Uh, the third, well, that's, that's, the, that's the tough Well, one. there's the graphic novel, The Joker, and um, but, but th yeah, I have that on my wall. That's Azarello. That's, yeah, that's you know there's there's that. But for me with the Joker, that that story for me was kind of right off the heels of Heath Ledger. Uh huh. And I and I just feel that there's a lot of like kind of that influence into that story. Well, maybe we do another Batman Beyond thing, or we do a, a Harley Quinn Joker story. Do something new. Do something original. That's what I would and, like, think. Bookend it. I would love yeah. that. I would love Death in the Family, The Killing Joke, and then something new. Yeah. But but have it three definitive pieces, you yeah. know, and don't don't try to make one movie out of three stories, but like definitively be these are three Joker stories. Yeah, you know, you it's, got we got an hour and forty five minutes. It's Tales from the Crypt. Right. Exactly. You know? Here's here's thirty two minute Joker stories. Eat it up. Yeah. You know, eat it up. Uh, and don't even have Hamill do the Joker in every single one of them. No. Like if each of them have kind of a different tone. Right. Do it. Do a different yeah, tone. Exactly. Maybe we even get a Dietrich Bader Batman. I really like how um, you know Mark Hamill definitely referenced and 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 and, and paid homage to everybody that's played the Joker. Oh and yeah. Made it since he's yeah. done it. Yeah. Uh, that was really cool. It man. was. It was. It seems know. like you know he's like man you know I go away and I see all these great performances like. 
I got to step my game back up. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I'm the Joker, you know? Right. So. It's it's an exclusive club. It is. You know, it's like uh, the dudes that have played Superman or the dudes that have played Batman or whatever. Or, you know, yeah. there's only so many people. There's not people. a villain that dudes have played. You got the Joker, maybe Lex Luthor. Yeah. They, they fall into that. Yeah. But there are not many villains just somatically or on television or anything in stories that multiple actors have portrayed right you know? so in, that's, it, that's at, cool. in memorable at a memorable right. level exactly so, uh in short um don't bother read yeah. the graphic novel yeah and just stick with that yeah that's all you need i mean this is you know i used to say that dc animation can do no wrong you know i've loved so much that's come out of DC Animation. Very few clunkers, in my opinion, and this is a very solid clunker. Yeah, I think it's it was solid clunker. It's they, a solid I think they took shit. too long. There were too many cooks in the kitchen, and they, you know, um, really messed it up. Yeah. Well, you know, what are you gonna do? Let's, you know, the world will keep on spinning for sure. Um, so, with that, yeah. So. Killing Joke was a bit of a disappointment, um, but here coming up, we've we've talked about this a couple times on the podcast, um, and I just wanted to kind of close out this episode uh, in talking a little bit about uh, the Suicide Squad film yeah. that's getting ready to come out here, and I mean, we're kind of mere days away now. Um, I don't care about the story at all. I really don't, because I... You know, the, my Suicide Squad is the John Ostrander Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm. I'd love it if they pay a little homage to, to, to all that hard-ass work back in the day. But, you know, I don't think that that's what we're going to get. Which is fine. Right. Um, my my main char my main thing is just, you know, how, how these, the, the actors, you know, pull off these characters, you know? Mm -hmm. I want, if, if, if Margot Robbie is, is, the, is, the, is the Harley Quinn... She better, you know, run it. Like, yeah. I mean, she. We need that 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 New York accent. We need all that. Mr. Shit. J. I mean, it not not real overbearing I thick, know. but I need just a, that little bit of, you know, I'm sorry, yeah. you know, like yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and that, all the way down to like Killer Croc, man. I mm -hmm. want Killer Croc to be like an animal, like, right? You yeah, know, biting people's hands off, that type yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's killer croc for crying out loud. Right. So I thought that since this is the Suicide Squad, and if you people don't know, in the comic books, originally, Suicide Squad was a band of villains put together by Amanda Waller in order to... It's the Snake Plissken scenario. Basically, in order to, to, to fight crime, the only catch is she's pretty much planted bombs in all of their brains it's snake plissken if they go yeah. off the rails they get their yeah, heads they get more up. than 24 hours right yeah, yeah. <laughs> right exactly right. which is they're, awesome they're, which is to, awesome. to catch a criminal you need a criminal these people are, are are all jailed up they're in you know uh max yeah um they'll get pardoned mm -hmm. or or whatever if they go out and do the dirty work the wet work Exactly, For but if they old, if they go the back to their old ways, you yeah, know, you're dead. You, yeah, you go off the path that we have set for so you. So it's either you're gonna die in jail, or you know, you 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 have a shot right. out here. Yeah, exactly. And you get to do your old thing, right. which you miss. Right, exactly. Badly, you know, you do. Right, and that's like walking down the street and just breaking a glass window and stealing jewelry and being like, "What? We're bad guys. It's what we do." Yeah. That, that right there I'm not looking forward to, by the way. And when I go see that scene in the theater and people really laugh at that part, I'm going to be like, we've seen this scene eight million times. Yeah, Come yeah. on. Uh, so, We're the bad guys. Right, right. So, so with the Suicide Squad coming out and with the name Suicide in the title, somebody's got to die, right? Oh, sure. If, well, I'm going to say this right now. If nobody dies, the movie is probably going to be just a steaming pile of horse shit. Uh -huh. Maybe not on the like Independence Day resurrection level, because I don't think anything is topping that for worst film of the year. I, I, uh, I have decided not to uh, engage. Did you go back and listen to the podcast where we talked about that, me and Nick, while you were in uh, I, 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 I haven't yet. Yeah, we talked about it uh, briefly. Uh, but anyway... 
uh, with, the, with getting back to Suicide Squad, somebody's got to die. So I figured I'd just uh, create a little uh, death pool here. And we go down the list of names of characters, and uh, I ask you, Tom, do you think they're going to die? Well, yeah, someone's going to die, and I have a pretty good idea okay. of who it is. Is it going to be Harley Quinn? No. <laughs> 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 it's not Harley Quinn. I would I would have to say that that's I'd give you like a thousand to one. Yeah, I mean if I was odds. going if I was uh, thousand to one if on the Harley Quinn. Killing Clay. Joke staff was writing this. Harley Quinn might die. Oh yeah, you know who knows? shoot her shoot her in the stomach. Right, she go have sex with like Superman. Right. Uh, because yeah, that would happen. Get pregnant. Right. Yeah. And somehow inside her womb, the baby, Mr. S. the baby, the baby gets a Green Lantern ring. Oh yeah, right. You know, yeah. While sure. it's still like you know yeah. being born, yeah. so uh, that would be, I would watch that. I kind of would too. <laughs> <laughs> And just a terrible scenario to think yeah. of. Lady is with child. The Green Lantern says you have the power to, you know. The the ring actually goes inside it's the womb. Inside her, yeah. yeah. Holy cow, right. Oh, uh, man. That is definitely a uh, effed up fairy tale for yeah, Green Lantern. Yeah, I, I think you know? so, right. So Harley, thousand to one. Okay, so. Who's next? Joker. Joker? No. He's not. No, I'll give you fifteen hundred to one on that. I really want to see a solid Joker, and I don't want to. I don't want to be annoyed, you know. And, I and you I know. don't know how to take this Joker yet. I, and from what I've well, seen in the previews, you know. I, but I can tell you this: I want to see Joker for about ten minutes of the film. Right. Well, yeah. And the one thing that I'll say is that at least it's just a completely different direction. Yeah, for you sure. You know, and that is really cool. Yeah. Now. It's going to be either super thumbs up or super thumbs down. There will be no middle with this. I just so. think the director is going to have a lot to do with that. Yeah, I think Ayer might pull yeah. this off, you know, and give us. A well, brand Joker's new a Joker. tough character. He is, know? man. Because he sometimes he's completely insane, and but the whole time, all the gears are working. There's always a huge plan, you know, and that requires genius level thinking. <sighs> Let's get back to Killing okay, Joke yes, really fast. Yes. Well, Joker's in it. Okay, so so oh. in the Killing Joke, they, he he talks about how he used to be a lab assistant, but yet they don't they don't have him do any sort of like chemistry. Yeah. In the movie. No. If they might have done that. Right. It would have worked a little better, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. The, 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 the poison gases that he has. Right. You know. You it know. makes sense, you know, but yeah. they don't utilize it at all. No, at all, they don't even tell you how he's like making people Joker when he touches mm. them and everything. You okay, know? they never really do that. All right, who you skip okay. someone on your Deadpool, bro? Oh, we'll get there. We'll okay, get back there. I'm just jumping around here. All right, Batman. <laughs> I'd give you a hundred thousand to one odds that Batman dies right. in this movie. Will Smith, Deadshot. I'd give you fifty to one. I Will Smith is not joining the DC. Cinematic universe. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't see Will Smith doing that either, unless he's like, I'm gonna get him a fucking dead shot movie, right? Yeah, you can give me a dead shot movie, right? Yeah. You know, which would I don't, tell, totally be terrible. You know, it would probably be at Ben Affleck Daredevil level the, nonsense. The next guy is my pick to die. Okay, just because he always dies. Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang. I think Captain Boomerang is gonna die. I would give you uh, three three to one. I would go. Uh, I would go. I would go as far as ten to one. But three to one sounds pretty damn. I I got my guy. I know who's gonna die. Rick Flag, El Diablo. Oh yeah. El Diablo's done. Yeah. Okay. First of all, it's the the guy with the tattoo bodysuit that we see show uh -huh. up in movies every once in a while when they need someone who authentically Needs looks to die different. <laughs> You know, right, but right. he's not an actor at all. And I think this guy was actually supposed to intended. I think he was originally intended to be Bronze Tiger, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And they okay. decided not to yeah. go Bronze Tiger. So um, he's totally expendable. Yeah. And I'd give you even odds on El Diablo. Okay. You know, plus fire powers are lame. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and they're never. They're only done right for certain individuals and that's usually when they're like made up of all fire you know yeah, yeah. Like human human torch right. you know or right. um who's the green the I love pyro yeah you know? you know but 
you know, fi- fire powers are not really all that yeah. exciting. And and the guy's not an actor. There's no reason to continue this character. Yeah, you're right. So Okay, you so know, you're going he, El Diablo. I'm going Captain Boomerang. We also have Katana, right. who's a very interesting character. Yeah. And, and Katana, if DC was like, man, let's get on this Netflix original series thing. Uh, the story of Katana, if you want to do a Daredevil-style right. DC well, show. Well, she was in The Outsiders, yes. Yeah, so tragic. Let's, We'll do The Outsiders on Netflix. Boom. Right? You and I are. Yeah, right? Yeah. We're uh, announcing it right now. Yes. We're, we're writing we're, the, the Outsiders. <laughs> we're writing The Outsiders for Netflix. So It's going to be a combination clear of off. The Outsiders and The Outsiders. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, so uh, Rumble Fish. Yeah. But um, I'm going to go and say this. I'm going to say El Diablo dies really early. Okay. Boomerang dies late. Okay. All right, we also have Enchantress. I don't think she's going to die. I don't either. I think she's going to be the low-key comic relief of the movie. Yeah. She's going to be extremely dry. She's Christina Ricci in Adam's family. Yes, it's Wednesday Adams. Yeah, it's Wednesday Adams. There we go. For sure. Um, And then we also have uh, Killer Croc, like I mentioned. uh, He's totally living. Yeah, he's got to live, man. He's got to live. But he's got to, like, I don't want... And we'll see him in Batman in the future. Yeah, I don't want to see a Killer Croc good guy. Like, I want him to kind of go off the rails in this film and do something Killer Croc should always be on the verge of just being an animal. Yeah. Kind of like the lizard. Kind of like... Kind of like uh, you know, there are things that animals, even when they know you, they'll do anyway because they're animals. You yeah, know? it's just who they are. Yeah, yeah. You know, the old scorpion on the back of the turtle or whatever yeah. thing. You know. Um, okay, so uh, two actors in the film who have roles that have not been released. Actually, three actors. Uh, two of them are more well known than the other. Um, Scott Eastwood, Clint mm-hmm. Eastwood's son, yeah. is in the film. We've seen pictures of him in the film, but they have not released who he plays in the movie. Uh, uh, here recently, people there was a, a photo released, and his character has a, a GQ name tag on like his army gear, like you know that embroidered like name that yeah. they all have, and it just says GQ. And it has some people wondering, you know, what does this mean? But it seems like a majority of the people, and this has been going on now since about January. Seems like a lot of people think that Scott Eastwood is going to be playing or is playing Slade Wilson in the film. Well, Death you Strip. know, um, I love it. Yeah, I know you do. I love it. I mean, I you know, Death Death Strokes my jam. We talked on it about it on the show in the past. You know, and I know you got to modernize a character. You know, but the more body armored look Death Stroke is really not my favorite. You know? Well, that's the whole point of Deathstroke is, you know, Slade Wilson is such a badass. He doesn't need armor. He doesn't need it, right. You yeah. know, and uh, he should have a cloth mask. It should not be I this hated, armored hockey I hated, mask like, thing. like, the Arkham like, video game yeah. Deathstroke. It's terrible. And I know why. It's because Deathstroke is so, so, Deathstroke's so cool. If you're an artist... You know, you want to make gear him up. Yeah, you want to gear him up. But I like he the swashbuckling death. Yes, I like the pirate looking. Yes, death absolutely. Death. You know, the old George Perez, the buccaneer boots. Yes, yeah, love it. Yep. You know, and with sword and plasma staff or whatever. And so, so what? I read a couple places that they they say that what happens is Scott Eastwood is kind of in the background for the first portion of film for a majority of the first person then we find out he's Slade Wilson okay and then they say for like the last 15 minutes of the movie he's Deathstroke okay um so De- Deathstroke is gonna be the engineer of the, the well, plot that's the thing is he the bad guy is he See, the man we behind don't, the curtain we don't know who the bad guy is right. and then, but that brings me to the next actor David Harbour who we mentioned in another podcast when we were talking about Stranger Things here recently yes and he plays Sheriff Hopper on that uh, TV show he is also in Suicide Squad and his role has not been released so you know and I and we were talking earlier I have read as far like uh, rumors as 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 wacky as him playing the villain the Floronic man which is more or less an evil version of Groot so instead he says Floronic yeah Floronic 
Floronic. I'm going to cover this entire city with grass and plant life. Were you ever a fan of Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Um, no. Okay. No. Well, there was an episode where Shake became a superhero called the Drizzle. <laughs> and his ability, his powers were to make it rain lightly. And the idea is that it would discourage criminals from going out. Because they'd be like, oh, it's going to rain. We'll do it on another night. <laughs> Genius, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, the drizzle needs to uh, um, team up with uh, Floronic Man. Floronic Man, yeah. So, cover. So, I kind of think that I'd like to go with the theory that David Harbor is playing the villain for the movie, uh -huh. even though for me, Amanda Waller is the bad guy. Well, totally. At the end of the day, she's got to be the real son of a bitch because, for one. You're running this program. You know. Waller's got all kinds of evil MK Ultra stuff going on all the time. Oh, dude, she's the worst, man. Yeah. Like Waller's, Waller's. People are just meat to her. Yeah, yeah. people, and, and and two also, you know, not to really like get up on a soapbox, but I just feel like our government is made up of so many Amanda. Oh Wallers, yeah, it's totally. It's not yeah. funny. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, you no, know, I... willing to do whatever it takes. Sure. To try to see if something works, you know. Right. How can I use these people to 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 try to to everyone test and out? everything is expendable to people with that mindset. Yeah. You know, uh, death and life are abstractions. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just the U.S. government. It's you know in all 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 realms of of the world, which is why you know love what you love, and mm -hmm. that's why we talk about what. Absolutely, we love. but um, but Amer Amanda Waller is also one of those characters that I absolutely love to hate. And right. every time that she's portrayed in any facet, whether it's animated shows like Justice League Unlimited right. or yeah. like uh, or like in like you know Smallville or on well, TV, Young Justice too. Young right? Justice. Yeah, I the, mean she the lab where they grew Superboy. Right. It's like you hate her. It's you all know? Waller stuff, man. In yeah. some level. Yeah. So. She is definitely Waller, have not Waller a misunderstood and Lex villain. Luther ever collaborated? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Amanda Waller was on Lex Luthor's cabinet when he was president of the United That's States. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Yeah, it, it, Lex Luthor's cabinet back then was completely just, oh, what? Yeah. How did you let him hire all these people, America? <laughs> like, do you know who they are? It's all criminals, man. It was all criminals except for Pete Ross, yeah. his, vice, his vice president, <laughs> Pete Ross from Smallville. Poor Pete. Oh, God, man. So yeah, um, so I'm I'm just looking forward to seeing you know how much of an asshole Amanda Waller is in this, and at the end of the movie, if she's the final thing we see, yeah. kind of like you know, oh, we're only just beginning, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. You guys are totally screwed. Well, you know, that's the thing about Suicide Squad roster has changed c continually. I would love right? to see the end of Suicide Squad be something to the extent of like, okay, now you guys got to go out and fight Superman, and they'd be like, yeah. No. yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Like, no, no right. thanks. Not gonna happen. True Suicide Squad, right there. Unless they get Bizarro, then yeah. But anyway, in all se seriousness, <laughs> this could be, you know, if there is a real plan in the DC cinematic universe at the level of Marvel mm -hmm. that they haven't really shared with us. I would use the Suicide Squad franchise to introduce key villains that you could disseminate into other films. Oh, absolutely. I mean, well, for one, they got to take they got a list of criminals that they got to pick from. Yeah. So you can throw anybody on that list in the beginning of the movie and have us all like, "Oh, that would be awesome if they did that guy," you right, know, yeah. something like that. So, um, so yeah, you know, I. As, as time, and then there's this guy too, uh, Ike Barinholtz. You know this guy, the actor. He's like a comedian. He plays he plays the funny. Uh, he was um, in the movie Sisters that came out this year with Amy Poehler and Tina Fey. Did not see He's it. He's the love interest of Amy Poehler. Okay. He has a character in the film that is being kept. Wrapped up. So well, okay, we don't know who and what, he's what's playing. the what are the th 
what's the theory on his character? Every man. Which is uh, Hannibal Bates has the power to duplicate any organic life form. So, Floronic Man, every man. When you say duplicate, sorted. do you mean take the appearance of or create, yeah. like split? Like, like multiple man. Yeah. Not, 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 not like multiple man, but like, like the chameleon. Okay. Like Mystique, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't think he's like an <coughs> alien or mutant that can like shift or whatever, but yeah. Okay. More or less, yeah. He can look like anybody, anybody at any time. Right, exactly. So, yeah, his role is a complete mystery. Right. Because, yeah. Because <laughs> he's every man. He's Amanda Waller. <laughs> he's everybody, right. Yeah, so who knows? Uh, but I'm, I'm looking Kudos forward to Kudos for them keeping so much stuff under wraps. Right? It's very hard in this day and age. Yeah. There's always somebody who, you know... Let's it loose. Right, out in sure. The world. And it's also too. It's like either one of those things to where they look at it and they're like, "Well, no one's gonna give a shit about that anyway." Like, there's no point in releasing that. Or it could be one of those things to where it's like, "Okay, we got a couple guys that really, if we release who this guy's playing, that people are probably gonna assume that these guys are these guys." You know, yeah, so yeah. why even do that? We are what. I mean, as of recording right now, we're just like a week off, right? It's next weekend. Yeah. So. um I'm looking forward to it. You know, I'm I'm definitely gonna go watch it uh, and check it out. There's still a couple flicks in the theater right now that I need to see, like Ghostbusters. I want to see that. Um, what else? Came Ghostbusters out? is a great time. You saw? I it? loved it. You saw the new yeah, one? Yeah, it was fun, man. It was fun, and uh, um, I have no criticisms for it. Interesting. I might go watch that today. <sighs> go actually. buy, you know, get some popcorn. Sit down. Melissa McCarthy crushes it. Rachel Wig is the most talented woman. Or Kristen Wig. Kristen Wig, yes. yeah, is just you know she's ridiculous. Um, it's a fun story, you know. Uh, it's a good time, and and Chris Helmsworth clearly had a blast, right, doing his character. Well, it seems like that's really like out of the box for a film. <laughs> you know, he doesn't do comedies. No, you know? and he's just really. I just think that every day was probably a joy to work for him. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, it know. seems like he's playing, like, typical dumb guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, he has, like, no, like, doesn't think at first. You doesn't know? think to answer the phone. Right. And he was hired to answer right. the phone. And just, right. you know. A ditz. Yeah, and they hire him because he's hot. Right, of course. Yeah, of I course. loved it. Yeah. Uh, I totally loved it. And, um, oh, there, I... Can I spoil one little bit? No, okay. All that's right. I don't want. I don't okay. want. I don't want to get right. spoiled. All right, we'll talk about it a, later. I've had a couple people already say, "Matt, go watch it." You know, there's definitely there's definitely fan service that goes on throughout the film yeah. to keep you ghost busting. You yeah, know, to keep that that ah, oh, I remember that. You right. know, yeah. so yeah, I'm looking. We'll forward talk to seeing after that. that for sure. We'll talk after for sure. Well, uh, that's pretty much uh, is going to wrap up another episode. Um, so, uh, yeah, don't go see The Killing Joke. Uh, we're looking forward to going to see uh, Suicide Squad here soon. Take the evening you were going to go see The Killing Joke and go back to episode 46 and listen to us talk about Stranger Things for a minute and just watch Stranger Things. Yeah, with or, your evening. or read The Killing Joke. Or read and, The and Killing Joke. don't even bother yeah. going to watch that mess. Buy comics, read comics. Exactly. Don't just watch this stuff anyway. Tom, you got anything uh, you want to uh, add before we sign off here? No, no, man. Uh, I am good. Um, su- summer movie season's coming to a close. It's been pretty, pretty fun year. Yeah, so far, absolutely. Been a pretty fun year. I've been uh, to the theater I, a lot this year. You know, Suicide Squad's gonna be a great time. I am a DC man at heart. Um, for all their foibles and flaws, um, Doctor Strange is the thing that. Once Suicide Squad is done in my life, I think Doctor Strange is the thing that I am most excited for. We can talk about that yes. in an upcoming oh, we, episode. We definitely Bibbidi will. bobbidi boo. Yeah, we definitely will. Um, so that's going to do it. Hope everyone has a wonderful day. Uh, for Dr. Tom Lucas, I'm Matt DeSimo, and this has been another episode of Maddie Loves Podcast. <laughs>